I'm super excited to do this uh, project with you because this is something that Miss Vaughn and I have been talking about. And once again, we get to, we always get to try something new. Uh, Miss Vaughn's open to trying new projects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you here. There's with the guidelines, and I'm going to show you an example, and then I'm going to then we're going to talk about how you create this. Okay. So you guys are doing non-renewable. Uh, you're using renewable resources. I did non-renewable as as an example. Okay. So here's one that I created. Give y'all a second and it's pretty quick, but just as an example. I think um, it's so cool that you made all that. What do you think? Give me a thumbs up if you thought that was pretty cool. That was completely done in Google Slides. And you know I love Google Drawings, but the, the only thing with Google Drawings is it's just one page, whereas this, I can use the same drawing elements and I can have it be multiple slides. So how it works is notice that I set it to be like a half a second for each slide and you can adjust that and we'll talk about it. So for something to show multiple times, notice that, that my title slides on there five times so that it would actually be almost three seconds versus a half a second. And then what I did was I started with, here's uh, my initial screen and you'll notice that this is all shapes and doing the background and everything. So all of that stuff we did, the cool stuff in Google Drawings, you can do just as easily because we can add in all of our shapes. We can draw our lines. Uh, we can add in our elements and can we, we can add text. So when Ms. Vaughn said that you need to put some information about it, the pros and the cons. So I've got my, my initial information about what petroleum is. How it's also called cruel, uh, crude oil. And if you'll notice, as I go down here, I started with this first initial drawing. And then I started changing some elements and adding some elements. So once I created this with all, you notice all the different little shapes, which I drew out the mountains and I got the oil underground and I've got, you know, the drilling equipment. Those are all individual shapes using lines and stuff. So you can look at some uh, images that'll inspire you on, you know, on Google, but you're not going to copy and paste those images in. You're going to kind of try and recreate it. So you can make each element because it's separate. That means I can move it. So I use the, um, clouds and if you know if i go to the next one that they shift and you'll see that i've got now the oils being brought through um the drilling equipment so if i go down more oils coming up you'll notice the cloud moving and i'm gonna move my cloud out of the way real quick and if you'll notice here this is actually all grouped elements i just actually drew the lines that i wanted to get the shape that i wanted so these are all just different lines shape for this i use the polyline because then i could actually get the different shapes but actually the other thing i did was i just did a thin line and drew the line and when you draw a line you can go up here and change the width of it and then i made it be a jumbo fat line that way i could move it does that make sense and then i can change the color of it for this one because they were all angular those are all just separate little lines and then i put it together the way i wanted it so if i did like this Command C, Command V. All right, so now I've got two and I'm just going to flip it this way. And as you can see, I started just building out the crossbars and you can adjust the width. I can change this, you know, see, so that's how I got the different size lines. And once I created it, and here's my tip is create off to the side. If you have like an item that's going to have several things together and then remember the trick where you drag your mouse around and group everything right click and you can group it just like you do in drawings and now this right here is going to be one thing that i can move all around undo is the mess magical button so now i can go through here and as i'm clicking through i added these are just again sh shapes that i found in here and i free drew this out to get the shading and the coloring and use the gradients so here's your shapes arrows call outs and then you can use the equations all of these elements plus the lines and word art are going to get you what you need inside of Google Slides. As I'm clicking through each one, what you do is you just duplicate the slide and change the next element. Let's take a look at the car one here. So once I got to the car, so this was me showing the, the gas station. So the petroleum is made it to gas. And as you can see, this is all individual shapes. I created the road, the car, uh, and the truck. This is my first slide. And then I made the next one and I moved both the car and the truck. How many scenes do I have in mind? Two main scenes, right? And you can add a third or fourth, however many you need to tell what you need to tell about your uh, resource. I took this scene and I went to the next one and I just added elements and changed them. When I got to the truck, when I got to the car scene and notice that it's literally each thing moving. And then I added in, of course, you were talking about pollution. There's the 
the exhaust coming from the cars and then I filled up the car and then off we went. They're moving, but it's each slide as I'm going through, there's been a movement piece on there. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new slide and I'll show you kind of start from scratch with how I did this. So we wanted you to see kind of what it's going to look like. So I'm just going to go here and I'm going to do a new slide. And it's just a blank slide. So what are some other ways that um, oil or gas is used? Or what would be another scene do you think I should add? So we started with we drilled for oil and then we went to the gas station. What would be another scene? Where else is it, uh, do people get oil from or use oil for? Drop it in the chat or if you want to unmute, you, you're welcome to do that. Petroleum jelly. Yes. Oh, to make like Vaseline. Good. So I showed that they drill on land, but where else do they drill? In the ocean. They do. They drill in the ocean. So would it be cool for me to have like an ocean scene? Yeah. yeah. All right. All right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to, obviously the ocean is a certain color. I'm going to do uh, an insert a shape here and I'm going to right now, because we've got to give it a horizon. I'm just going to drop this shape right here and I'm going to go fill my, fill the bucket, go to the gradients. And we know we can do custom colors or we can use the ones that they've kind of already got. The ocean's kind of blue with a little bit of reflection on it. There it is. And always remember when you drop in shapes, you want to take off the border color unless you want it. So I'm going to take that off, make that transparent. So now I've got a little bit of ocean and I need to have, what else do I need to have? A little bit of a skyline, right? So I'm going to change the background so that it fills the whole thing and we'll give it a light blue. So now I've got my sky and I've got my ocean. What do we think? Not bad, right? We get the idea. What else do I need to add to this to make it look like I'm drilling in the ocean? Wait, um, scuba divers and a sharks. sharks. Sharks? Sharks would be, now, if you want to add extra elements like that, which would be really cool, that would be something cool to add. Ms. Vaughn added sharks. Thanks, Ms. Vaughn, for that challenge there. And a boat would be good too. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to add a shape that's going to be the platform that's right here on the ocean surface. And those are usually drill that usually built out of steel. So I can go over here to my gradient and give it kind of a steel looking color. So now obviously it can't just float there. Uh, they actually have a drill that, and they have supports that go way down to the bottom of the ocean. So now I'm going to add in some more shapes and let's grab some other shapes. So notice I, I've been using just rectangles and I can go in here and add some other elements, but I'm going to use actually the rectangle, but I'm going to do it this way this time. And I'm going to do some supports and drag that down here. And so I don't have to reinvent the wheel. We know we can use the copy and paste, but I'm going to fill this in this gradient since it's underwater. It's a little bit darker. So now I've started, I've started building my base. All right. Down there. Make sure everything connects. So now I've just got two and obviously there's going to be some structure to the top of it. Um, now I'm not an expert and I'm, I'm thinking of this from my mind. I'm going, okay, I kind of seen this before, but if you need a little bit of inspiration, so we can kind of see what it looks like. If I go to my images and they'll notice I've got some. So what do we notice? To, now I started mine, but what do we notice? I need to change on mine to make it more realistic. I'm noticing that all of these that actually the platform is not just flat on the surface. It's actually move above the water. Thank you, Julia. Awesome. So, and some other elements I'm going to need to add in here. Now, am I going to get as detailed? No, not necessarily, but I'm using this as inspiration. So obviously I need to move this up. Are my supports big enough? No, I need to make those way. Yeah. Aiden's like, no, not even close Miss all. So I need to make my supports bigger now to make sure that these are even. I always just start make the one that I like. And then you can use Google for inspiration and keep it simple when you make your image with Google. Yes. Because the goal is, is not, you're not going to make it exactly the same. It's the, if I look at it, you get the idea of what I'm talking about. There we go. So now I've got, now I've got two and I'm going to keep adding to that. And as someone pointed out, I might want to put a boat in there to show that there's a you know, boat on the ocean and I'm going to add to my elements here. So once you have your initial one, so let's, let's add in a boat. Let's see if I can do a little boat. Cause that would show that it's moving. Uh, what shape can I use for a boat? You want a sailboat. Now we're getting, now we're getting fancy here. Let's turn it this way. And we're going to flip this right click and you can do this order. And one of the options is rotate and I can flip, flip it, not vertically, but horizontally. And now I can match these up. Order, send it back. So actually notice now how it went underneath the water. And now I'm getting the idea of a boat here. Um, and remember, we're going to use that group trick. So I'm going to group. All right. So now I got my boat. So now what I'm going to do is 
Maybe I want my boat to start over here because it's going to make sense that it's sailing along. Again, I'm going to add a bunch more elements to this. I might add little workmen up there working on it. I might add the scuba diver. I might add the sharks. I'd love to see sharks if you do sharks. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to duplicate the scene. All right. And then now I'm going to go to this boat and I'm going to just use the arrow and go over like five, six, eight. You choose one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to do the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Great question. So you can right click and I can choose to just duplicate, which means it's going to ma make it automatically. Or you can hit control D, which means duplicate or can, or if you're on a Mac, it's command D. So control D duplicates each slide. Okay. All right. So now this one, I got to move what, uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're getting the idea. We're going to do a couple more times. I only really created three scenes, but each of my scenes is going to have 10, 15, 20 slides each because each thing that I want to change in it is going to need to be added. Now, you could also do things like I could move that back and forward so it's showing more depth and uh, everything. But now, this is the important thing because uh, I'm going to, I want you to learn from my mistake. Make sure you have your scene set before you start duplicating because then when you start switching things in your original scene, you got to go in and change them in all the ones you've duplicated. Does that make sense? So you want to make sure you like your main scene first because I went in and then I went, oh man, I need to change the text. All right. So we did a couple here. So now I'm going to go in and this is the important thing. Like you're like, well, how did I'm scrolling through it and you want to see what it looks like live and in present mode to present your, what they call publishing your slide deck. You're going to go to file and you're going to go down here where it says publish to the web. And when you do that, it gives you this link and it says, oh, well, how you want it to automatically advance your slides and it'll do it. That's how it played like an animation. I mean, the fastest it will go is every second, which is really not that fast because if you, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, that's not that fast. So every second, we're going to still choose that because that's the fastest we can go. And then I'm going to copy this link down here. It gives me this magic link and I'm going to copy it and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to paste it. Notice at the end where it says it's going to publish fall, it says all this blah, 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 blah. And it says 1,000 a second. What we want to do is we want to bring that down and I'm going to change that to 500. So now I've cut my time even more in half. So now it's a half a second. So now I'm going to hit enter. So now I'm in here, but I have to go ahead and tell it to go ahead and play. So now we're going to play it. And it's starting from the beginning. And now there we go. We see there's the petroleum moving. Very cool. Clouds are moving. The oil is being gathered cool. We went and picked, we went and got gas. Now, maybe you might realize it makes more sense for my scene. I should move my drilling before we get to the gas station to make sense. But look at that. There's my boat. It's just sailing along. So with your task, the goal is that you're going to take what you learned about your renewable resource. So for example, you're doing the sun. Obviously, you might want to show how does the sun impact us? How do we get energy from the sun? I didn't add all my elements to this. So technically, I'm going to want to go back to my original one and I'm going to want to add in my drill stuff and make jazz all this up. And then I'm going to duplicate it again. So this is the important thing that so you might be on uh, here. You notice I changed this eight, eight faces to show movement. But if I'm trying to put some information on here. So if I was saying in here and I said that this was uh, an offshore drilling, so I'm going to go in here and I can do a text box. All right. I'm going to jazz that up. Think of it like a cartoon. I'm going to fill this. This is my, I'm going to format it center, make my text a little bit bigger. This is my new favorite thing. And I don't know if anybody's noticed it. If you've used Google slides lately, that they added this option that you can incrementally add up your uh, font size by one at a time, that is like magic to me. Just like on Google Drawing, Slides has those guidelines. So this tells me that's centered. And I'm going to copy this. And now I need to, because obviously I can't read this or the person that's looking at it can't read all that text in half of a second. So I'm going to need to put this on several slides. So that way it's not, and this is important. Make sure it's centered so that it's it's not obvious that I had to add it. See how it I, that one's not centered? The red line is a magic line. So now I'm going to go back here and I'm going to, I can go in here and I just really want to start from maybe the middle. I'll have to start all the way over. And I'm going to hit play. So after we gas up the car. I was kind of proud of my truck and my car. They look pretty realistic, right? You can go in and test and see how it looks. So notice I got to make sure that 
a little distracting because it's moving. So you got to make sure you put it in the same exact spot. So it is best if you get the main scene the way you want and just tweak and add a few different elements. So for the person that said shark, uh, Miss Vaughn, I know that was you. Uh, you you could add your shark in and you could have your shark swimming in circles around uh, the uh, drilling platform. Okay. For my scene where I had people at the gas station, I could have little stick figure people walking or maybe uh, let's see who was it that has the new, the new puppy. Maybe the dog got out for a little walk and there's a puppy that's walking around. So you can be creative to add to your scenes to give it value. But the main thing is, is that the, the gist of it, what is your renewable resource. So if I'm talking about the sun, maybe I'm showing how the sun goes across the sky um, and how it radiates the, the sunlight. And that's how we get, you know, uh, both heat and energy from the sun. So I, I see there's lots of comments in the chat. I'm going to see if there's any questions right there so far. I want to let this kind of sink in for a minute. What do we think so far? Is it, do you think this is a pretty cool project? Well, this, what's really cool about it is you're getting to show your creativity and then also demonstrate what you've learned about your uh, renewable energy source. And then at the end, everybody's going to get to watch each other's animation. So even if, uh, you know, multiple people pick the, the sun as their resource, we're going to get to see how someone depicts uh, the sun and shows how it uh, has value to um, each of us. So I added clip art to my search and noticed, just as Ms. Vaughn said, I've got super simple one right here which is, again, that would be very easy to recreate with shapes from what I've shown you guys to some more ornate ones. I mean, look at this one. I got a helicopter on there. So you've got options uh, to kind of inspire you to be like, okay, I see I need to add those arms. I need, so if I looked at this first, I would have noticed that the platform is not flat on the ocean. I actually have to raise it above. And why would it not be flat on the ocean? Obviously, because the ocean level goes up and down, I got to make sure that I, I, represent that. Definitely some more simple options. And as Miss Vaughn pointed out, if you add clip art to it, so if I were to do a gas station clip art, let's see what we get. And that just gives you a little bit of inspiration. Uh, so for like renewable energy, we're talking about like solar panels, right? Would be something that one includes to show how the sun is used. So solar panel clip art, some inspiration here. There we go. I can go in and very easily recreate all right, this one right here. All right, so I'll let's take I'll challenge accepted. Oh wait, I like this one because we got the sun. All right, yeah. so I'm gonna, now I'm looking at this. I got the sun, I got rays, and I've got the solar panel. All right, so let's go over here, and I'm gonna go, and I'm just gonna start a new one, so I don't mess up the original one. I'm just doing a new Google slide. So I'm gonna go shape, and so if I'm making the sun, and here's a trick too. If you want to make sure that a shape stays that it's uh, uniform, if you hold the shift key as you're drawing the shape, it's gonna keep it uniform versus trying to turn it into like an oval. So now first thing we always take off that transparency. We're going to fill this in. We're going to give it, eh, that's a little too dark. Not really loving that for right now. We'll play around. There's the sun. And obviously I'm going to need to add in some rays, but obviously the other cool thing was that it had a, the rays were coming out. Let's see if we can find something here like this, but we're going to turn it. And here, get rid of those exterior lines, fill it, have it be some sort of thing that kind of matches with it. So as you can see, there's the sun coming off a little bit more. I need to add in rays, but the other main part is that I need to add in the solar panel. I'm going to make these line up here in a second. So right now you're, you're getting to see that the starting from scratch. So obviously I need to add in smaller shapes and maybe I want to be not necessarily linear. I could want to be my tiles are going to be like this on my solar panel and I want to make sure my tiles are a little bit bigger and that they line up. And I think maybe I can get, if I go a little bit smaller, I can get three across. So you're going to start with your main scene and then you're going to change it. So I'm going to go here, here. I'm going to actually hit that shift key. This is the magic thing here. I'm going to hit one, two, three, right? So now I've got three that I like copy and then I'm going to hit paste. So now I've got three more. So I'm just going to move it down. So I'm not doing every individual. Once I've got the shape I want, kind of lining it up here and remember the trick hitting that shift and arrow, just one arrow at a time helps me line it up just a little bit. So far, we kind of looking like a solar panel, not bad for a first attempt. So now the other cool thing is, is that I've made my shapes and I realize that I want to uh, fill in what that reflection looks like. Cause we go back to it. 
I can select all of my elements. We're going to fill in. Let's go back here real quick and look at it's kind of they're they're kind of blue with a little bit of a reflection on it. So I think I'm going to go here and I'm going to use the reflective blue. I like the gradients gives me some good color. Pretty cool so far, right? So now I'm going to group this. So now it oops, hold on. One more. I lost one of my shapes. Where did you go, little buddy? It inadvertently <laughs> deleted. That's the tricky thing sometimes with grouping that we're going to get it. There we go. So now maybe I'm going to move my reflection from the, the, from the sun. I'm going to move this just a little bit more. So it's going towards, you get the idea that it's going towards the solar panel and the sun might go up a little bit more here. I might make my sun a little bit larger. I might bring this to the front and it's all about eyeballing the way you want it to look. So now I've got the sun reflecting on my solar panel. Let's go back here to the one that we looked at. So, so far I might want to stretch out the reflection to hit a little bit more, but you're getting the idea. It does not need to be an exact replica of what you're looking at. You're, you know, like this one, the solar panel, the sun's up here. You can tell that's the sun and it's hitting solar panels. And as Ms. Vaughn said, I think I did that in what, like three, four minutes? Not too bad, right? Yeah. yeah. And I can, I can go in and jazz up the exterior panel. So maybe I decide I want this to be uh, a little bit wider, the border around it. Uh, maybe I want to fill, you know, I want to ungroup this so that I can do some stuff. Maybe I want my panel, this right here, to be, as you see, I'm going to roll with the gradients. Fill it in more. But I love gradients. And remember, we can also do those custom gradients. So maybe I want this to really show the transition of uh, the brightness of color. So I could say custom. I could start this with a really dark yellow and end it with a much lighter yellow. And I could add in one in the middle that is kind of in between. And so now I've got this. So you could do this for your sun as well to kind of give, because the sun has that reflective look to it. And I can change this from being linear to radial. So if I change it to here. So now you can see that I could have done that for my son as well. If I go here. I could tell I really like that one. There we go. And then, oh, what do you think? Yeah. How we look? Yes, that's good. And then what you could do is, so if I started with this one, I could actually have uh, move the rays. I could put reflective look, you know, over here. So you could see that light's kind of hitting off of the solar panel. So do we get the idea? Of what, of what your task is and expectation for this creation. Any other questions that have popped up, uh, Ms. Vaughn, as we've been going through this? Uh, I, I'm hoping that this overview helped with what you guys are going to do. I can't wait to yeah. see what you guys create. I mean, that's the main thing is that dazzle us with what you come up with. So I just did the solar panel on the sun, but you might create, if the sun is a renewable source and it causes our, our crops to grow, you might have your crops showing that like flowers are growing and corn is growing or something like that. That would be super cool to show that that's how we, you know, the sun affects uh, what's going on, you know, in terms of plant life and stuff. So, so many options, but the goal is you're going to want to add in creative animation piece, as well as that information, what, you know, the pros, the cons, you know, demonstrate that. So if you'll notice on mine here, I started with, uh, petroleum is crude oil, right? And then it switched to oil reserves or reservoirs. So even though that, so I actually had two informational sections in that scene. And then we got to the next scene and I was going to add in more information about that. So yeah, but keep in mind, you want to allow, if every slide is a half a second, you're putting text on there, you want to allow four to five seconds. So it means to be on like, eight to 10 slides so that people can read it. If it's, a, you know, especially if it's a longer sentence, because you don't want it to be so quick that people go, what was that? So I'm super excited to see what you guys create. I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, and what's really cool is once you guys do this for science, this is a really cool activity you can use for all to dazzle all of your subject area teachers with uh, ways to do uh, creative animation. So for storytelling uh, at ELA, as well as retelling stuff for social studies and explaining math concepts. So this is a super easy way to create a, an engaging presentation. So I'm super excited.